Hello guys and welcome to another data recovery video. This time I'm working on a little Sandis USB and this one is a lot harder than I'm used to dealing with. I'll show you why. So the problem with this USB is that this controller, particularly it's a bit hard to see, 00, what is it, 388, is a controller that is known to be very difficult to solve with a chip off. So it's very high risk for me to remove this chip. And if I do, I may as well experiment with a new controller chip just in case. So I do keep a lot of spare parts for even for the older stuff for a day like today. And as you can see here, I've got a USB made by SanDisk. It's not identical but the controller if you can pick it up in the light is identical so what I'm gonna try is to swap remove the faulty controller because I can see there's no activity here with this good one and by the way I've already done all my preliminary tests which is check the electronics and the controller to see if it's working it's gone so here goes nothing let's try a spare part chip swap let's start with some Flux around these pins. And we will get some heat into it. Where's my tweezers at? There they are. Now I just got to make sure that I remember the orientation of this chip and the little dots that way. So, yeah, same orientation as the spare little donor one. Well, we've got to get a lot of heat into these pins, so it'll take a while. Wasn't too hard to remove that, nice and careful. And let's just flip it over and see how it looks. Give it a go. See how it looks underneath? Should be easy to swap this. The, this pin struct is easy. Sorry, a bit noisy with all these tools. But anyway, um, solder should be okay. I'm a bit worried about the. Sorry about that. The camera just froze on me. I don't know where at, but I think you got the point. So the solder here looks okay. This should be very easy to solder. This this kind of uh, pinout structure is very easy. The outline pins rather than like a ball grid array. There's a bit of solder here. That can be a problem. I might need to remove some of that. So I'm just trying to figure out what I should do. I think I'll remove the working one first. and then see how much solder is left on this one. So again, let's uh, flux this chip. Should be enough. Extraction fan on and hot air coming up to temperature. There we go. Relatively straightforward and simple. Don't drop it. There's not that much solder on this one. It's a big grounding plane. I'll just cut some of the noise. Hot air needs to cool down. Hmm. Okay, let's take it to the original one. So what I am going to do is remove a bit of solder from this ground plane in the center because if there's too much there, it can cause the chip to bulge and not sit correctly. Um, it may not need to be grounded, but 
I mean, it's part of the engineering. They've engineered it that way for a reason. So I'll just remove a little bit. Wait for that. There we go. So just using some old solder wick to suck it up. Okay, so I'll leave a bit there between that and what's um, on the chip should be enough to still ground it correctly and give us a good chance of success. So I'm really confident we don't have to reball this because that would be annoying if I did. There should be enough solder the way it is to get this one to re-solder and line up. Now, try and hold it somewhere and I hope once I get the heat it'll suck into position. Surface tension, I don't know, what's the physics that will help that? So I'm just going to hold it in place, going to get some heat in there. No, I'm not. Gun's not on. Okay. So once I get enough heat where there is some soldering occurring, I should be able to release my tweezers and the pressure holding the tweezers. And it's a little bit out of sync. It is. So I was hoping it would suck into position, and it's not. No, we'll just have to move it. I think I got it. I'll have to clean it up and just see what the pins look like because it's still full of solder. So let's get a cleaning. Right. Because it's a bit warm, it's going to evaporate the isopropyl alcohol quickly. So just nice and gentle when we're cleaning. Gentle, gentle. We're also looking for any pins or anything that's moved out of place. <clears throat> But so far it looks like it did go to procedure well, so I think we'll zoom in and try and get a nice closer look at these pins because if they're not soldered on, if we're missing one pin or if one pin's a problem, we could be in trouble. How does that look? Might just try and get some angle and get in there a bit closer. There we go. Oh, that's good. That's a good view. Okay, that one's perfect. They're all soldered correctly. No short circuits. This one I can't really see. I'll come back to it. I'll have to clean it again. It has soldered. I mean, it's only a quarter of a millimeter out of place. So it has soldered there. All those pins look good. And what is happening here? Same again. This one looks good. This one, I'm just going to, let's clean it. I don't know it's out of focus. Sorry. Okay. What's that ball there? Is that a problem? Just looking at this little, I think, I think it's a little V. No. Okay. That must have been there. That must be normal. So what do we got? Four... Eight, 12 pins on each side so it's a 48 pin little microcontroller for USBs that one's all soldered tight I think we've done it so I think we can test it now we'll plug it in USB and hopefully we get something out of it if you're new to the channel I am a professional data recovery engineer and people mail in devices for me to recover data let's plug it in and test it and there it is working again good to see I'll copy all the files off to return it to the customer and that is the correct capacity 58 gigs and as always friends have a nice day and I'll see you guys in the next video